Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities Miniatures. Today we have a new Creature Caster model. This is the frog, FRG Num. This is their new Orc Forge Lord. So, hey, kind of cool. That's a new one for me. Usually when I get Creature Caster models, they are in those black poly bag mailers. But not this time. Let's take a look at what we got in here. We got a nice detailed 50 millimeter base. Obviously this is very sci-fi oriented, in case you didn't know that. We've got a big, and they want to say that's a shoulder. Smoke plume. A lot of parts in here. We have the body itself, which is actually a lot bigger than I was expecting. Now I know he's supposed to be kind of hunched over, and I'm not exactly sure if he's actually supposed to be wearing pants or not. What do you guys think? I don't know. I really can't tell. I don't think he's wearing a shirt either. One of the things I liked about this was, so yeah, it's sci-fi, but there's little bits that seem almost fantasy to it. You've got a anvil he's going to stand on, obviously, being the Forge Lord. And here we have a missing piece for number three. I do like that they've been numbering off the parts now. We used to just get A's and B's. Um, you have an option of both holding on to the weapon and a handless one. You can just kind of, you know, attach to their belt or whatever. Use as a piece of scenery. Oh, my favorite. Attaching wires. I don't know if I'm going to have to heat this up or if it's actually going to be the correct size. We'll see. What else we got in here? Okay, the other leg and another wire. A big mecha punchy fist. And this is a big fist because it's bigger than his head. Arm and one of the faces. So, very feral, very animalistic. Almost reminds me of like the Urukai, except more pronounced nose. That's one of two heads, by the way. You also have a gun option, so if you wanted to just go straight fantasy, I mean, might be a little bit hard with the wiring and stuff. I thought it might be a little bit easier. I don't like the gun. Sorry, guys. I think it's a bit of a miss for me. I'm, I'm not liking the skull on it. Too chaosy for me. I don't know. Maybe it'll grow on me, but I do like they have the option, just like the hammer. You have both a held one and stashed and readied version. So the armor bits are very cobbled together, very orky in that regard. I'm not a big fan of the cobbled together stuff. I know a lot of people are. I'm probably in the minority there. I don't know what part 22 is. Maybe the base? Is this some sort of a backpack, I believe? And the wires are going to attach to that? Mm, I think that's the forearm. And this looks like the shoulders. The elbow, maybe. Another bit of armor. That's not the body. I thought it was. I believe this is skirt armor. Possibly. We'll see. And then finally this should be the other head. We have a mechanical jaw as all proper orcs should have. Okay, well, there's a lot more parts than I thought it was going to be, but it looks like everything there. Um, let me get this all cut out, and then I'm going to get our quirky friend here at least somewhat put together, and we'll take a closer look as I work my way through it here. Let's talk a little bit more about what we've got here so far. So as you can see, I put on the far more orky face with the enhanced cybernetic job, just because. The arm locks pretty well in place. You can see here, this is the port where the backpack's going to go. Looking at the backpack really quickly. Very engine block-like. You're going to have this piece right here, which is going to have a blank side and a detailed side with the detailed side sticking outwards. So you can see all the detail there, obviously. This small hole on the back of his giant shoulder is going to take this exhaust pipe right here. And even though it's out of focus, you can see it kind of like so. We'll glue it on in just a sec. For the arm itself, you have the 
part that has more of an indentation than the other. That's going to be where it is bent at the elbow. You can see like that. It's going to just lock kind of into place. And you really do need to lock it into place because when it comes time to attach the smoke, you can see these two little vents right here and then this big blob. What's going to happen is those two little vents are going to attach to these exhaust ports right there. And then this big blob is going to actually lock into place on his shoulder there as well. Got big, huge cloud of smoke coming off of him there. And he's got a really big arm. So be prepared for that. Other challenging issues that I can see are going to be a problem for a lot of people are the skirt armors. Now you can see there's these indentations here. So there's a double, you know, almost like an H shape. That's gonna go right here. There's a double shape right there where there's two layers of folds and it's just gonna kinda lock in place like so. Basically you want it to line up with the ammunition on his belt there. And I still don't know if he's wearing pants. I'm pretty sure he's not. So that one goes there. This two-piece one is going to go right over here. There's kind of a indentation for this piece of cloth right there. You might want to fill it around a little bit before finally attaching it. And then the third one, there is a small little crevice right here where my fingernail is. And there is a little piece sticking out right there that is going to stick itself right in there. So after that, the only thing left is what hand options you're going to use. I'm obviously going to go with the hammer just because. And I will show you my handiwork in just a moment. So our Forge Lord here is about 99% finished. And I say 99% finished because this long external cord here is actually just held in place by its own volition. I haven't bothered to glue that on yet. It's going to get in the way, so I didn't bother attaching it just yet. But you can see here where everything kind of falls into place. You've got that extra exhaust pipe we talked about. The one that goes on the back right there of the shoulder. Smoke attached to the arm. He's a little lopsided. He's very heavy on his uh, right side there. So I'm not going to glue him yet just because I want to be able to get to his little crevices and cracks. He does not have any genitalia hanging out, just in case you're wondering. And I'm pretty sure he isn't wearing pants. It really seems like he's not. I mean, he does have enough junk and gear on that it's probably going to cover him up. I don't know. I always like my orcs with green skin, so it just looks kind of silly sometimes without the pants. He gives me such a one-piece vibe. And there went that wire I was talking about. The other one there is actually glued in. Uh, I, I don't know. The smoke coming off gives me a bit of a, a Luffy, what is it, Gear 5th, Bound Man type vibe. Whereas the arm itself looks like something off of Frankie. If you know what I'm talking about. Otherwise, I'm just talking gibberish. It looks like an anime thing. Anyway, I, I really like the look of it. It's, it's not the same as every other company's orc, which is always kind of nice. And it, it does have a good heft. He's big. I mean, he's really big. And just to prove my point of how big he is, too... Let's see if I can get him precariously balanced. We'll borrow this Cyror uh, Space Wolf there. He's a nice little prop. So there is our Forge Lord. And there's an orc right next to him. A GW regular boy. Not even a knob. So you can see there, there is a pretty big discrepancy here. If you're looking for something that's going to fit in with the rank and file, grabbing the War Games exclusive Grim Skull Boombasta, I believe his name was. You can see here he's a little bit smaller. He's not attached to his base because I haven't bothered to actually do anything with him yet, sadly. And I gotta say, it's probably been a couple months since he was on here. Shoot, I think I did it before we went to Japan, even. He's a little bit smaller, but you know, again, this guy's perched up on that. Anvil, and he's also quite big. Grabbing Captain Bloodclaw from RTLW minis. He's pretty big as well. Again, using our GW orc as a size reference. But again, he's supposed to be, you know, more of a captain type, more of a knob. 
more of a big dude. The only model I think that was kind of comparable in size is the Iron Jaws Mega Boss. And I've seen plenty of people convert him up into, you know, knob size stuff as well, make him a bit more 40k ish. Obviously, he's really leaning into the 40k with the cybernetics. Maybe he might be able to get away with it in Age of Sigmar. I don't know. I mean, he's he's pretty big. Hell, we'll use him as a mega boss, but especially without the gun. Why not? It's not like there isn't already steampunk magic in the game. Because um, at the moment, you know, I think he's really going to clash with the aesthetic of uh, all GW army, or if you're primarily using Cromlex stuff, or, you know, any of the other various orc manufacturers out there on the market that make unique and interesting orcs. I, I definitely think he's got a unique and cool looking style to him that is pretty much all his own because really unless creature caster starts making some more orcs you know he's he's kind of kind of the outlier at the moment but i'm happy with it definitely to me personally it's a lot more easier and more fits my style than their their new crazy queen i looked at that and i just couldn't handle it so i'll put a link down below if you're curious and like i said you know he was big nice solid kit uh, not too difficult to put together obviously you know, I went ahead and put the smoke on just to make sure that everything kind of lined up precisely. I kept trying to play around with lining up the arm without the smoke attached, and it just didn't want to work. So your mileage may vary. It might work out a lot better for you. So again, cool looking kit, and you can get that direct from Creature Caster themselves, and they're pretty quick about shipping. Literally, I paid for it, and it was shipped out that same day. So hopefully you'll have just as nice a luck. With that said, this is High Lord Tamberling with Obscurities and Miniatures, and I will see you all later. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.